Right, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for RC Hibbler's Engineering Mechanics Statics textbook. So we have this fundamental problem from Chapter 6. Uh, it's asking us to determine the force in each member of the truss and uh, if each of the members are in tensional compression. Um, this is very similar to problems F6-1 and F6-2, which I've created uh, tutorials for uh, in the past. If some of the concepts we cover here are lost on you, I'd encourage you to, to look at those previous problems. Um, otherwise, let's get started then. So uh, I've basically replicated what's going on in the diagram provided to us here um, in my own little format, just so that we can uh, do all kinds of scribblings on it. Looks like we have two um, kind of external forces. Uh, acting on our truss as a whole here, we have this 200 pound force at joint C and this 800 pound force at joint A. Um, let's first consider the truss as a whole. Um, so naturally we have two supports. We have uh, this fixed support at joint D and we have a roller at joint B. Um, maybe this is the first time some of you will have seen this, this little idea, this little um, shape here that's just a roller support that's all that is um so that just means we can add uh, oh hello we can add uh, some uh resistive forces here so we've got this fb dash y from our roller support uh we know it's acting up because uh, that's all our roller support can do um at joint d uh, we know that uh, we have a um, horizontal force acting to the left. The reason that we know it's acting to the left is because uh, this uh, external force is, is acting to the right here, so this is the only thing that can counter it. And then uh, in, the same, in the same way, we have a uh, vertical force that we know is acting up at joint D to counter this 800 pound force here. Okay. Um, before we get into considering the internal forces going on in our truss here, let's uh, consider the truss as a whole first. So um, there, there are things that we can already say here. We can already say that FD comma X is equal to 200 pounds. Um, oops. So the reason we can already say that is because FD comma X is the only force here that can counter this 200 pound force. Uh, so we can already say that. We can also say in the vertical, we can say we have 800 pounds acting down at joint A, and that is equal to the sum of FD comma Y and FB comma Y. Okay, now this isn't solvable since we have two unknowns here, but um, we can provide ourselves with a basis uh, to solve for FD comma Y or FB comma Y um, by uh, taking moments. So we can say here that the sum of the moments acting, which which point should we pick to take moments about? We, we want to solve for FD comma Y and FB comma Y. I'm going to pick joint D because it's kind of eliminating our, if we, if we take moments about here, it's kind of eliminating our the, the moments that come about from F, uh, D comma X and FD comma Y and enables us to solve for FB comma Y here. So I'm going to say the sum of the moments acting at D, acting uh, anti-clockwise is equal to zero. Therefore, uh, the moments acting clockwise are equal to the moments acting anti-clockwise about D. Uh, what moments do we have acting um, clockwise? Well, that doesn't, have, that doesn't have a moment about D. This doesn't have a moment about D. Uh, this has an anti-clockwise moment about D. Uh, and the the anti-clockwise moment there will be um, for uh, FB comma Y. So we can say uh, for FB comma Y is equal to zero um, since we have zero um, clockwise moments, right? So we have this this for, uh, for FB comma Y uh, anti-clockwise moment and we have no uh, clockwise moments. Therefore, if you haven't figured it out already, uh, FB comma Y, ah, FB comma Y is equal to zero. Boom. So uh, let's just rub that off our diagram there. There we go. Uh, cool. Uh, since we're saying FB comma Y is equal to zero, 
using this idea that we derived earlier, we can say, therefore, 800 is equal to fd comma y. OK, so we have fd comma y, we have fdx, we have fby. We've solved for all our unknown um, kind of resistive forces acting at our uh, supports. Let's move on then and consider our um, uh, internal forces. I'm just going to add some little labels here so we understand what we're doing. OK, so uh, let's consider the joints one by one. Uh, we can start with joint D. Um, so naturally, we have this FDY dragging it up. So we must have this uh, AD uh, internal force here dragging it down. And by inspection, uh, we can see that AD is equal to 800 pounds. OK, um, that must mean we also have AD acting here that is also offering 800 pounds. Note that is uh, providing vertical equilibrium with this, this 800 pound external force here. OK, um, we can also say we've got uh, CD acting here, which is equal to 200. And therefore, we have CD acting like this as well over here, which is also providing 200 which is providing horizontal equilibrium at joint C. So we can see that the, the, the solutions here are kind of unraveling. We've solved for joint D. Let's have a look at joint A. Well, we're already in vertical equilibrium. The only other um, vertical idea that could be offered at joint, D, at joint A, sorry, here is from this, this AC member. Um, but that's the only one. So logically, we can kind of say, well, uh, AC must be a zero force member. In the same way, uh, AB is the only thing that could offer a kind of uh, horizontal um, force here. However, um, there would be nothing to counter it. So again, we can say AB, member AB is a zero force member. Um, let's have a look at joint C now. So um, we're in horizontal equilibrium. We have CD offering 200 to the left and this 200 pound uh, external force acting to the right. So we're in horizontal equilibrium. Again, the only thing that we, we know that this is this this AC member is a zero force member, um, and that there, there would be nothing to counter the um, vertical force acting in member BC. So BC is also a zero force member. Okay. Um, uh, so we've solved the problem. Um, there's only one thing left to say here, uh, which is whether the members are in tension or compression. So uh, the, the only members that have internal forces here are AD and CD. So let's just say AD, AD uh, is in, uh, looks like it's in tension. And CD is also in tension. OK, so uh, those are the solutions to this problem here. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.